Okay, welcome to the um, April, April 9th meeting of the Forest Sewer Commission. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those <coughs> present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Mr. Furlan, would you do the uh, honors of taking attendance? Yes, so uh, President Almeida? Present. Uh, Member Sousa? Present. Member Bernier? Present. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the first item on the agenda is, the, as usual, is the minutes of the previous meeting in this particular case. We're talking about the meeting held on February 5th, 2020. I believe we've all had the uh, minutes sent to us earlier. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to read through it, please do so. If you have any questions you wanna uh, bring up or corrections to be made, um, please do so. If you've already done that, and you feel that this is, that this is accurate, then um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the previous meeting held on February 5th, 2020. Make a motion to accept the meeting as, as presented. All in favor? Anybody second it? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I must say that uh, reading the notes, whoever wrote it did an excellent job. Excellent. That that was Katie uh, Scofier, a new uh, clerk within the, uh, the uh, yep. excuse me, project specialist within the sewer division. Uh, well, she is here present with me again, taking minutes for this meeting as well. well Compliments well, to you, Caitlin. Thank you. All right. Um, that takes us to item number two, the um, budget and um, for fiscal year 2021 and proposed rates. Uh, I believe that's been presented to us in, uh, in our packets. And when I can visualize from it, uh, we're looking at a, um, a proposed budget of $24,276,001. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, I, I guess in, on my end of it, and looking, looking, having looked through the uh, what's been proposed and what's happened in the past, uh, I guess part of the, the major expense, um, I guess, goes into the area where the oldest contract is uh, in terms of uh, expenses, uh, and that's uh, that's based on their on their contract that's in place now. Um, one question, Paul, um, can you tell me, I, I've forgotten, what year are the, are the contract are they in? Uh, we're going into, this uh, budget will be contract, will be year seven in the contract. Seven of 10. Seven of 10, correct. Okay, all right. Um, so if, if you want, I can give you just a broad overview of the, uh, of the rate increases and also uh, the impact. Um, so as uh, uh, the president stated, the, the, this year's budget, $24,276,001. Uh, um, that's, uh, that's an increase over last year's budget of $336,160. Uh, uh, again, as mentioned by the president, a large amount of that increase was the contractual increase. Um, that is uh, is being uh, that's uh, part of the uh, the oldest contract. Uh, the one other thing that uh, that was increased, uh, it was added into the Veolia contract line item, uh, is a planned amendment um, through uh, through talks with EPA uh, and CLF. Um, uh, we've talked about adding a CSO facility manager. Uh, that would be a person that would be uh, specifically designated to manage our screening and disinfection plants. We currently have Cove Street uh, and President Ave. Uh, we'd like to be bringing on two more uh, two more CSO facilities. 
Uh, and with talking with them, we'd like to have somebody that can manage and oversee those particular facilities. So that was done uh, as a, um, that was budgeted in this year for one person uh, as a change order, as an amendment, a potential amendment to Veolia's uh, contract um, for this coming fiscal year. The cost of that uh, was at uh, $100,000 for the uh, FY21 budget. The other thing that well, uh, can I can I just interject here? Is yeah. that something that um, the commission members are going to have to sign off on because of the fact that it's an amendment? So yes, a any any amendment to the contract that would require the commission's approval. Um, so that would come before the commission. I have just budgeted it in this year's budget planning that uh, that may be moved forward. Okay, so we should be looking for that. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, once uh, you know, once we uh, hopefully uh, get through, you know, talks with ELF and EPA because that's pending on their approval of requests that we have with them. Um, so the other thing, that the uh, debt service uh, increased this year seventy six thousand uh, dollars, almost seventy seven thousand dollars. Uh, so that, again, and that's for projects that have gone online, uh, we, that we're now feeling the impact of a debt service. Um, so the one thing that really uh, hurt us, and I know for years, uh, Mr. Sullivan, you know, the prior administrator has uh, said this for years, that relying on uh, free cash or retained earnings, it's also known as, uh, is a tough thing to do in our budgets. And we have done it for years. And this year we had a drastic increase in our, in our available free cash that was certified. Uh, we lost uh, 581,000 uh, from our budget. So um, although the budget didn't go up much, that's actually, you know, that $581,000 is revenue that, that needs to be made up just so that we can maintain you know, a flat line. Um, so the increase in the budget isn't much, um, you know, 336,000, but then we also have that loss of revenue of retained earnings that needs to be made up in another revenue line item. And that's why, you know, the rates do have the impact that they have because of the loss of free cash. Again, uh, building our budget, we always wanted to use the free cash or retained earnings that we have available. Uh, just to minimize uh, the impact to the uh, to the customers. Um, in FY20, we had 1.225 million, um, you know, in retained earnings, free cash budgeted. Uh, in FY21, we're only able to budget 643,000. Um, so that additional revenue needed to be needs to be uh, made up. Uh, within the uh, other revenue line items. So that greatly, that, that did have a large impact. Um, and you know, that's, that's one of the things, again, looking back at the revenues um, and using free cash to, to plug in as a revenue, uh, that's definitely one of the downfalls. When we get to a year like this, where we don't have the free cash, it, uh, it increases the rates. Uh, the two rate, the rate increases uh, were, again, I've, you know, left them as, as low as we can naturally because any impact to our customers is not good. Um, you know, the sewer rate uh, was seven cent increase. Um, so we went from uh, $5.48 up to $5.55 per CCF. It's a seven cent increase. And then the stormwater fee uh, was a $2 increase. Uh, from $44 per ERU per quarter uh, to $46 per ERU per quarter. Uh, and I know the last so last year, the last two years, there wasn't any increase in the stormwater fee. Uh, I looked at it this year, and the, the debt service, the fair amount of the debt service that was coming on board this year uh, is due to stormwater uh, infrastructure. So when we look at these particular rates, uh, break down the budget, and kind of each line item, how much we pay towards stormwater from a particular line item, how much we pay towards sewer. And that's how we get these rates and what we're going to increase uh, and how they balance out. So, 
Okay. Um, so we're looking at, uh, I guess, on an annual basis uh, between stormwater and sewer for an average uh, family that uses 100, approximately 109 gallons per day of, uh, of $11.71 increase over the annual period, correct? Yes, so that's so that's over a year period. Uh, so it would be eleven dollars seventy one cent increase per uh, per year. Do you happen to remember what the what the overall increase for this would be year twenty twenty was? Uh, so for <coughs> just at the, well, I was just trying to bringing it up just as a matter of a comparison to what we're proposing for next year. Yeah. I seem to recall it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 13, 14 cents. So last, last, last fiscal year was a 10 cent increase on the sewer and a, uh, there was no increase on the stormwater. All right, okay. So we're about to be approximately <coughs> about in the same range as we are from last year. Yes, okay. correct. Going from 10 to 11. Correct. So we're 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 running at about the same clip. Yeah, roughly roughly about the same same amount of increase. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, that, you know, I've just been, just as a matter of, just just as a matter of, of another informa information with respect to this subject, um, we we're, we're going into our last quarter. Or we're into our last quarter mm -hmm. for this fiscal year. Um, do you um, do you anticipate being able to hit the budget? So at this point, right now, I'm very concerned about hitting our revenue numbers within the budget. Mm -hmm. um, as of uh, as of a month ago, I have uh, uh, I've cut down on all non-essential spendings. Uh, Due to the COVID nineteen issue, I feel currently that our revenues are going to be short. Uh, I track revenues very closely uh, on a monthly basis, and then down to a weekly basis. Uh, I've seen a drastic decline in the revenues over the past month and a half. Uh, so I am concerned. I've uh, I've talked to the administration uh, and uh, uh, the CFO about. Uh, about my concerns with uh, meeting the revenue projections. Again, if if this was a normal year, I don't think I think we would be perfectly fine. We wouldn't have any issues uh, meeting our revenues or our expenses and our budget being uh, balanced at the end of this fiscal year, FY20. Um, the I can I got to concur with you. I, you know, based on based on the numbers that. Presented to us as you mentioned, it's every four weeks or every month. Um, I can see how the atmosphere that we're in now is going to have a detrimental effect on income. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I guess, well, as you say, Paul, you're keeping an eye on it, which is a great thing to do. Um, but I guess in the final analysis, we have to see how it all plays out. Yeah, correct. So I do have, I, you know, since the COVID 19 uh, pandemic has started, DEP uh, and EPA, they've been having multiple uh, meetings, uh, video conferences uh, to keep uh, water suppliers and wastewater uh, treatment facilities aware of what's going on. Uh, I've posted that question at a, in a couple of different forums, whether there's been any guidance. There's been guidance so far about passing the FY21 budget and, um, you know, and uh, Accommodations that they're making to allow communities to go into one twelve budgets or other uh, areas like that. There hasn't been any guidance for the FY twenty budgets or any shortfalls that may occur. Besides, they have given one guidance which uh, allows any COVID nineteen related cost to go into a deficit, just like you run snow accounts uh, into a deficit at the end of the year, and then you make it up in the next fiscal year. Uh, but they haven't given any guidance for a uh, re reduction in revenues. Um, and it's not only on our side, uh, the city side, where we're going to have these, uh, the sewer side, uh, water side, water is in the same exact boat. 
or you know almost the same exact percentage decline on the revenues. Um, and I expect that this, that the city may have uh, you know uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, taxes that aren't being taken in. Um, you know, so again, I've posted those questions to organizations uh, which have said that they're going to talk to DOR and other agencies to see whether they're planning to give any guidance on how to deal with any shortfalls due to um, due to revenues not meeting their projections uh, due to the coronavirus. Uh, just just a matter of clarification for me again. I get a little confused sometimes about uh, free cash and retained earnings and so forth. Usually the uh, free cash is usually determined sometimes in what, September, October, November? Uh, that, result, that results from the previous, is a result from the previous um, fiscal year, am I correct? Yeah, so free cash uh, is typically November time frame. that's when it was certified this year. Uh, the one All right, so uh, that's the point I'm trying to make. Let's, it, let's just say this, there's some free cash that's going to be out there in November or October. Um, and if there is, if there is a, a somewhat of a slight deficit, let's say, to, um, to the 2020 budget due to conditions we're presently in and so forth, does that, will that money, that money then go to making 2020 whole? Or do we use it for future um, budgets? So again, so right now what's plugged into the FY21 budget is any money that was certified back in November. So back in November, we did transfer some to the stabilization account we do every year to try to build up a stabilization account. Um, but uh, the free cash that was certified back in November of 2019 is used in the FY21 budget. Okay. So right. currently we have no free cash to certify cash available for that. Uh, we do have a stabilization <coughs> fund uh, of about $500,000. Um, that could be used if there is a deficit in FY20. Uh, that could be used uh, if there is no guidance or relief given uh, and we do end up in a deficit in FY20, uh, our options would be to use our stabilization account, uh, use our certified cash, which means that FY21 rates would have to be higher than what they are uh, proposed to you now, uh, or increase the rates in FY21 to, uh, to back plug that, uh, that deficit. Okay. Okay, it's good. You know, we're in challenging times right now, so um, yeah, I guess everybody's going to be watching what's going on. Um, okay, does anybody have any uh, questions, other questions with respect to this topic? No, I think it's, it's clearly spelled out, and uh, so uh, I'm comfortable. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, just, would anybody want to make a motion to accept the proposed budget for fiscal year 21, uh, 2021 at $24,276,001? I make a motion. Second a motion. All in favor, aye. Thank you, John. Aye. So then, aye. do we, Paul, uh, would we also want to specify the um, approving the rates? Of yes. Um, yes. rate and so on, what if they? Yes, correct. If we could also have a okay. rate of okay. the okay. um, In addition to that, gentlemen, um, I would entertain a motion to um, to approve the sewer rate of five dollars and fifty five cents per CCF and stormwater fee for forty six dollars per DUL. Anybody mind to make that motion? Um, I'll make, make a motion to accept. Okay, I second it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank you, John. That's not. I saw that um, on the sheet. It's on the sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Forty six dollars. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm looking at it on the screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, Paul. Yes. Mr. Freeland, do we also have to um, do anything with the um, the revised rates that's presented for the um, ordinance? That's uh, part of the package. Yeah. 
So if you, so if just, just so we have it on the record, if you'd like to uh, approve all ordinance changes as presented within the packet, if you want to take a vote on that, that covers all of our uh, our septage, our out of town, our in right. that don't have water. So if you want to just approve um, the ordinance proposal as presented within the package, I think that should cover it. All right. Um, okay. I, I kind of remember doing that in the past. So I just that. So, gentlemen, I think we, we also have a page that's been presented where the revisions to the ordinance on the um, sewer rates, um, we also need to have a motion made to accept that. The $5.55? That motion. Of no, the entire no, there's a page. There's a page prior to the listing of the budget that talks about um, to be ordained to the city council. Of right, I was wondering about that. Right. Yeah, um, those rates. Well, we all, I believe we have to um, we have to approve. So we need a motion to accept the rates as presented on that listing. So does anybody want to make a motion to accept okay. the rates as? I make the motion. Uh, second, second the motion. All as presented. Favor, aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That gets us through that. Thank you. So just right, that takes us just for the board. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Orders to the uh, this that budget and the rates have been submitted to the council for their review. Uh, April first, there was a of the. Um, to have the budget down with the they're going to have a, and this I understand they're having a, a city council meeting uh, April 14th to start digging into some of this stuff yeah I, I I have heard that they do have a meeting scheduled I haven't seen the agenda of the, um, you know okay. the, currently there's there hasn't been uh, they haven't been asked to act on the budgets but they uh, there was an audit in place for it to be sent to the uh, sent to the council prior to April 1st, so they did have the budget prior to April 1st, and the rates needed to be down prior to May 1st, so that was done as well. Okay. Uh, can we move on to item number three? Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, item number three is um, the South End Pump Station uh, awarding contract. Um, in our packet, we have the, uh, a proposal by Wright Pierce to um, award the contract for the um, South End Pump Station Replacement Project to Hot Engineering, who came in at low bid at a price of what appears to be $3,059,000. Correct. Correct. Um, and along with the packet, this also does, spells out all the items that made up the bid, along with all the other bidders that were in play. Um, Mr. Furlan, just to refresh my memory, Hot Engineering, I know they've done work for us in the past. Um, can you give me an idea of where they did some of the stuff? Yep, so they did uh, one of the contracts uh, down at the wastewater treatment plant back in the mid 2000s um, it was it was a fairly substantial upgrade down at the wastewater treatment plant um, from uh, I wasn't around at the time but uh, all the research that I did do they were very good with, um, through that project we also got uh, ex excellent recommendations for uh, current projects that they're on okay all right um, yeah I seem to recall having having the same feelings about it. Um, it looks like, just taking a look at the numbers, some of the bids came in pretty close. Um, just for my own edification, uh, the bid of uh, Buy Hot includes, um, includes some money for bid alternate A and bid alternate B. What what's that all about? Do you have any idea? Yeah. So bid alternate A was we uh, see that seeing that the numbers came in where they did the engineer's estimate for this project is uh, roughly three point four million dollars. Uh, so we are uh, underneath the estimate. 
Um, the bid alternate A is a portable generator. This would be a large uh, generator mounted on a trailer uh, that would be able to take to any one of our stations, any one of our 14 stations, use as a backup uh, in the instance where one of our uh, where one of our generators at the stations went down, or we didn't have a generator. Uh, we do have two stations without generators, so um, we do find during storms if those go out of power. Uh, I have to send it back to there to back out the wet wells or, or deal with it some other options. So this would be a uh, this would be a way for us to uh, to manage that ourselves. Um, didn't we? Um, I believe in the last meeting didn't we didn't we go ahead and approve um, purchase of uh, a, a generator that's going to be on some type of trailer. Right. And, and is this what we're talking about here? So we did approve the purchase. We approved um, standardizing a particular generator. Uh, Cummings. What type? Right. Exactly. Yeah. We went with the Cummings. Um, that's what we put in a, one of in the uh, President Ave Pump Station. We're very comfortable uh, with their uh, pot supply chains and their availability and their service. So that's why we uh, standardized on the Cummings. So that's what we did at last meeting. Standardized so that it. <coughs> In this bid specification, we could tell the contractor that we want to come and want, uh, another brand. So that way we can start to standardize throughout our fleet and uh, you know, keep a minimum you know, spare parts on the truck. It makes sense. So the uh, build, bid alternate B uh, is an assessment of the force main um, and also installing an emergency bypass. So that force main is, uh, is very odd. Um, so if you want, we can take a look at the plan that's on the screen, the uh, slide. Uh, this is the South End Pump Station. It's over in the 994 Jefferson Street Complex. Um, that's down uh, next to the Dave's Beach area, over next to Atlantis Charter School. Uh, <coughs> this is actually a small bridge where you come over Sucker. Right after that is our existing pump station. Mm -hmm. uh, New pump station is going to be kind of modeled after the President Ave pump station. Same type of design, a red brick building, generator inside the building, uh, code required for us to have a bathroom within that building. Um, but the building will house the mechanicals along with the generator. Uh, and then off to the side um, over here, this is where we would have the wet well with our pump. This would be our um, check valves and valve vault, and then this over here would be a meter pit. From here, the, uh, the force main continues out. This force main has two different types of material. It runs all the way up to the edge of Route 24 uh, with a uh, ductile iron pipe, and then it uh, transfers to an asbestos concrete pipe. Uh, we want to find where those two join together and do an assessment of that area. Uh, make sure the pipe materials are good. Uh, make sure there isn't, uh, we don't feel that there's going to be any fault in construction because it's stuff you can't camera inside a force main. Um, so we just want to get a, get a sense of the condition of those force mains. This is also going to give us a spot to put in a temporary bypass um, T. So we've done this at most of the other stations. <coughs> we've done this at some other stations as well where you take and you put this T where we can hook on a pump. Uh, to, so if the pump station ever goes down, we can put a pump down in the well, run pipe over land to this T, plug onto it so that it will pump out the rest of the way. Um, so if we ever have an issue with the force main, the bypass setup is a lot easier in place. So that's what Ultimate B does. Isn't there a... Isn't there going to be a, a major modification to the pumps themselves? Uh, I believe you got what a 1200 and a 1400, and you're gonna you're gonna replace one with a 2000. Yeah. So within this pump station, we're actually uh, adding an extra pump too. Uh, we're going from two uh, two pumps up to three. Uh, this will take care of some of our wet weather flows. Um, you know, that, that we do see some surcharging on the backside of, uh, uh, within these, within this pump station. Uh, this pump station also does see a lot of uh, uh, clogging due to rags. Um, so we've actually had, uh, we've actually had inch and a half shafts on these pumps snap off because uh, 
too many rags built up in the impeller. Um, so the uh, new pumps that we get in a flight, they're actually the same exact pump. Uh, again, that's something else that you specif that you that you voted on a standardized specification at the last meeting uh, was a flight pump. Uh, they're identical pumps as present and have identical impellers. Um, so we'll be able to have one spare pump to be at, for President Ave or for this station. Uh, they have special impellers in them, which will help grind up or cut up the rags to be able to pass them through so they don't grind up the impellers and snap the shafts. So. Mm -hmm. All right, that, the location of that, like you said, is in a major complex. Um, am, I, am I right in assuming that all sewerage and, you know, all of water coming out of it all goes to that pumping station? Yeah, so everything, so it's the 994 Jefferson Street complex that's currently Spectrum Lighting is uh, occupied. That's a big place. Yeah, they occupy a fair amount of the buildings. They have, they have an excellent, uh, you know, a good quality business going down there. Um, and they, uh, all their flow does go to this pump station. But not only that, this takes a lot of residential as well. Um, so this pipe uh, heads from the 994 Jefferson Street complex. Um, crosses over the wetland to Dickinson Street. So it takes forth from Dickinson Street, Spencer Street. Then it actually crosses the cemetery, continues to take flow from Wood Street um, and uh, Norman Street uh, and those streets over there. And then it actually takes flow from Tiverton as well. Um, mm -hmm. At the very outskirts of that, there's two pump stations from Tiverton that come and flow, into this, uh, flow down to this pump station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see why it needs revision. Yeah, again, it's, you know, one of the pump stations was built in the 60s. Uh, hasn't, you know, it's been maintained since it's been running. Uh, but the life expectancy of these are 20 to 25 years, uh, you know, 25 years typically. Uh, with, with our maintenance, we're able to keep them going longer. But uh, you get to the point where, well, you, you sometimes invest in so much money into maintenance that at that point it's uh, you know worth it to do the capital investment and improve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds like a plan. Are these things ready to go? I would assume once we want this uh, project. Yes, correct. So uh, the contract is on board. I do have signed contracts from them. We're waiting for the board approval so I can uh, endorse for the board and then we'll send it around for the city signatures. Um, I have, so the other thing that I do have from the contractor uh, with the COVID, um, you know, everything that's going on with COVID-19, uh, I did request a letter from them stating that they uh, currently don't have any um, issues. They don't foresee any supply issues or labor issues or anything that would affect any of the prices that they bid at. Uh, that was something that I kind of wanted to make sure that they weren't going to turn around and say, well, we can't get these pumps uh, for X amount of time and it's going to cost you X amount more. Uh, so mm -hmm. I did uh, get a letter from them stating that they can't, uh, with everything that's currently going on, they can still adhere to their bid prices. Are we good? That's good. Yeah, we need some assurances. Correct. All right. Uh, anybody have any other questions or anything they want to mention about this project? If not, no, I'll, entertain, I'll entertain a motion to um, award the contract for the replacement of the South End Sewer Pump Station to Hot Engineering for the amount of $3,059,000. Anybody would make that motion? I'll make, make the motion to accept it. $3,059,000 okay. to Hot Engineering. You going to want to second that? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, that brings us to item number four. And we've been asked by the staff to um, table that particular item. Um, I guess there's some, some information that's still being collected on it. So um, I think we ought to just take this and table it. But I, we're going to need a motion to do that. So if somebody would make a motion to uh, table item number four, which was for the President Avenue pump station change order. I'll make a motion. Second the motion to table number 
item number four. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. All right, that takes us to item number five, the Middle Street change order. So Middle Street change order, uh, what, I can run down and give you a brief overview. Uh, this change order is in the amount of um, $177,938.92. Uh, $177, uh, this is a final change order for this project. As you know, the project uh, has been complete for some time. We're just working through some... Uh, <coughs> some balances, some punch list items, and some balance and quantities and everything with, uh, with the contractor. Um, most of the, uh, most of everything that's been included within this change is, uh, additional stuff that we've, uh, that we requested. Um, one thing, uh, is, an, is a price escalation asphalt that's required for us, uh, to, uh, pay the contractor by law. Uh, that's tracked, and then they uh, at the end of the project um, <coughs> that you that's balanced to be able to uh, to adjust. Uh, there was some uh, planting replacements within the swale. So if you look on the screen, uh, this is a layout of the whole entire project. We have the bio swale that runs in this section uh, in between Broadway and uh, and South Main Street. Uh, some of the plants that were put in there. Uh, I didn't like the outcome of it. They were, they weren't exactly what uh, what was in my mind, and I don't think they would work good for the area. So they will be changing those to a different style plant. Uh, that's within the, uh, the bio swale area. Um, so is that, that going down Middle Street? Yeah, going down Middle Street. Yeah, in between Broadway and South Main. Okay, correct. So <laughs> again, this is this uh, this change order. Uh, pretty much is going to close out the project for us. Uh, they will, we do have a final invoice to pay to the contractor, um, but it closes it out. The project overall, uh, you know, I'm sure you've driven it and it's come up very nice, I think. Uh, we do have the bioswale again that runs through that, that area. In the spring, the contractor will be doing a cleanup of that, so they'll go through the, all the swale up when they do the final when they change out the uh, final plantings. Uh, through the rain that we've had, um, and we're getting some more right now outside, um, there hasn't been any report of any flooding or any issues uh, with this project. The amount of water that goes through that pipe is uh, pretty phenomenal. During a pretty heavy rainstorm, I was standing at the bottom at Middleland Bay and just to see the amount of water that comes down there uh, is pretty amazing. So. Uh, the project overall was a great project, good outcome, uh, great collaboration between uh, between our department, uh, engineering department, which gave us guidance on the paving and the sidewalks and stuff like that, DCM, uh, as well as uh, the contractor, K.R. Uh The other thing on this project, I just want to remind the board, is that we did receive a grant from uh, FEMA, through FEMA. Uh, so this was a hazard mitigation grant that we $5.5 million of this project, so. Okay, uh, Mr. Perlin, one of the items of the change order, the last item. Yes. Some this struck to my fancy. I've never seen something like this before. Perhaps you can enlighten me. Um, item number 11, adjustments for as-built quantities. Yep. Just what does that mean? So, so when we're constructing the project, um, you know, you have some quantities that run over, some quantities that run under throughout the whole entire project. Uh, one qu quantity that ran over on this project was ledge. Uh, we did have a number in the, uh, in the project for base ledge, uh, but then there was an adder on top of that base ledge. Uh, that number did go over substantially because they, uh, they did hit some ledge throughout the project. So, and you I know, remember that. I yeah, remember that. you know that was that was primarily in the lower section between the uh, between uh, Bay Street and Broadway, uh, but you know it, sometimes you have to put in a six foot diameter manhole rather than a four foot diameter manhole. Uh, so that's just taking all the line items on the contract 
and, and balancing it out so that when we close this project, <laughs> up with a, uh, a zero, uh, you know, zero above, zero below. All right, so you feel comfortable with what's there? Yes. With sir. respect to this item? Yes, I feel comfortable with what's there, and I feel comfortable that we have the, uh, we have the authorization. Okay, so this, is, this should be the final change order for this project, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say um, it was a very challenging project, from what I can remember. Um, but I think, all in all, it came out very good. I think everybody did a great job on it. Um, the area looks a lot better, and it's doing the job that it was intended to do. So hopefully we won't have any more flooding down that area. Um, anybody have any other questions or comments you want to make about this particular item? Oh, yeah, I have not, a question. Excuse me? I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, item number two. Is that uh, How many feet was that? Uh, is that? That's not just one little patch or that's a, a lot of patches or what? Nope, that was, that was actually a... Uh, that was a uh, collapse of a sewer main that we ended up dealing with, and that was a manhole to manhole. I believe it was uh, okay. 180 or 210 feet, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, that's fine. Very good. Anybody else have any other comments or questions? No, uh, I like them. not. I'll entertain a motion to um, approve change order number three. In the amount of $177,938.92 for the uh, Middle Street Drainage Improvement Project. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, next item is the Crestbrook change order. I believe this is the one that nests out to zero. Um, yeah, so again, uh, Paul, could you uh, yeah. give us a, a little breakdown as to what's going on here with the change order ends up being zero? Yeah, so in front of you, what you have is change order number four. Um, again, this, this leads to uh, almost the last question you had uh, about the balancing of quantities. On this particular project, we had some quantities that we needed to balance out. Uh, the uh, uh, amount of the change order that it increased uh, was $82,193.49. So that was additional work that was, uh, that was in the project. But within the project, there was also other items, um, <coughs> other items that we went over, uh, excuse me, that we were under the bid quantities. So that way we can deduct those items out in the same amount. Uh, so that way it's a no change order. Um, the different uh, items that are in it make this uh, three total items. Uh, and all those were uh, items that we requested. Um, the three items of increase, uh, things that we requested. Um, they had primarily to do with uh, with some areas down by the interceptor drain uh, and fencing those off where that was just a good secure. Uh, that's uh, areas that lead down to our water uh, filtration plant in the north with upper pond. Uh, so some of the gates and, and some of the fencing was pretty, was pretty rough in that shape. So it had to be either repaired, replaced, or uh, some areas we fortified it with boulders or other type of materials. Um, when they did the interceptor drain, there was just some uh, really thought that uh, <laughs> didn't come out uh, the way that the engineer intended for uh, and wouldn't be feasible for us to work. So we work with the contract to correct those issues. Uh, that's one of the other change orders. So. Okay. Um, so th this basically closes the project up. Yeah, so this, this is pretty close to closing this, uh, this contract out. Um, there is still there is still punch list items uh, a bit more on this one than there is on Middle Street uh, left for the contractor to do. Um, once those are done, I expect that you'll also see one more change order, which will probably be a negative amount. Okay. 
just to balance out the final. So, um, so do we have to, because we've... Uh, uh, on change order right. number five, do we have to, uh, are we going to sign that also? Uh, I didn't see any sheets there. Uh, so this one change order, so I expect that it will be once we get to the very final closeout with the okay. contract. It, it's not at oh, this point. Oh, okay. It's My not fault. at this point. Sorry. Yet. I thought maybe I okay, had so a two, two missing. <laughs> no, okay. Are you, are you, uh, are you requesting us to Acknowledge change order number three as being zero. Or yeah, if you if you want for to approval or yeah for approval change order number four because essentially it is it's a change in scope, essentially is, is what it comes down to. But it's the change order number four. All right. So okay, because we my packet shows change order number three uh, form. Um, and there is a zero change order to the to it, yep. and then and then there is the one from um, Wright Pierce, which talks about change order number four, which spells out a zero change. But then it goes on and says there shall be no change to the contract amount of six million three hundred fifty eight hundred and three dollars with right. this change order number four. So, are we are we to approve change order three and four? Yeah. No. So this is a typo on the uh, contract. Just thought that should be change order number four. Uh, yeah, I will have that amended. So on the change order form, it should be change order number four. I'll have that amended prior to. Uh, All right. Prior to okay. All right. Okay. I just I just thought that maybe it was something else. Um. Okay. Anybody have any questions regarding this? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve change order number four in the amount of zero dollars. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'll make that. Motion? Make well, that. Anybody want to second it? Second it. All in favor, aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, this takes us to item number seven, scatter work orders. Item number seven, there's two work orders for Woodward and Cohen to continue our skater work. Uh, again, I know you've seen uh, a couple of these uh, mm -hmm. for small amounts to do tip, uh, small particular projects. Um, again, how I broke this up with Woodward and Cohen was uh, I wanted to be able to track all their different, the different things that I'm having them do, I want to track by different uh, by different work orders and different POs so that stuff doesn't get too mixed up. <laughs> um, what Woodward and Curran is doing in these two, number 12, uh, is they'll be working on, um, working with CDM on contract number one. So as you know, we have contract number one ongoing down at the wastewater treatment uh, plant. Uh, right. That's an upgrade, uh, demolition of the incinerator building, upgrading all the electrical throughout the plant, uh, new generator uh, that will operate the whole entire plant. Um, they're also adding fiber loops, which are uh, communication, uh, fiber optic uh, communication loops, uh, as well as uh, security, uh, including control access uh, and, uh, and video security down at the plant. Um, I've, I've, I've wanted Woodward and Curran, and I've had them do this up to date, and I've been happy with them to oversee uh, anything related to SCADA. Um, SCADA is, uh, is what runs our plant. So it's the computers that um, run and maintain our plant, uh, how we operate our plant. Um, to have one person doing something and another person doing something, I, I don't like the idea of that. I like to have one person in control. It's an issue. I have to talk to one person. They can point the finger at somebody else to say, well, CDM did this part and Woodward and Curran did this part, and Wright Pierce did this part, and this one did. No, I want one person to be able to to have control of that system, um, yeah. and concentrate on that system, <clears throat> and how it. Well, can, I, well, can I just stop you there, just for my benefit again? I, I think during, I think keep asking this question every time it comes up. What's a scatter? What's uh, a, what is that? 
SCADA stands for System Control, uh, System Control and Data Acquisition. Um, so, again, it's the computer system that kind of runs our plan. So I, I understand. I I get that. I I, I know the purpose of the emails, but again, just yeah. My, I see the word scatter, and, and you know, I, I, I see this on every, on every occasions of maybe once a month, and I keep forgetting. Yeah. And, so, I, and when I look for it in the in the work orders, you know, I, I'm I'm scanning it and looking for what, what the what the spelling of it is. What the acronym? I, I don't see it there, which is okay. I'm just I'm just. I'm just trying to do this for my own benefit. I just don't see it, which no. is okay. It's just, fine. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to get to what the meaning of that was. Yep. yep. No problem. I got no problem with what it does and what our intentions are and, and, and the need for it and so forth. Well, I think it's going to be a great thing once it's all integrated together. Yeah. No, without a doubt. And that's, and that's why I think it's uh, crucial to have Woodward and Curran oversee that. So on work order number 12, that's uh, for working on contract one, um, which CDM is the uh, is the main engineer, but in turn we'll be working with them on all the uh, integration. Uh, and that's in the amount of $45,000. Okay, you, do, you don't need uh, our approval on it because it's under a certain level of money, right? Uh, under 50,000, correct. All right, okay, so this is, again, strictly for information. Yep. Okay. Uh, if the board does want to vote on it, that's more than welcome. Well, I'll leave that. Uh, I'll, I'll present it now to you, Jamison. You know, it's being presented to us. I'm sure we're going to see more of it as we go along. Correct. On, uh, on, a, you know, on a basis. So. I'll leave that up to you, gentlemen. If you feel as though we should be approving them as we're going along, it's up to you. If not, I'm fine with that also. All right. So uh, work on an, work on a 13. Uh, again, we're in current. Uh, this is the uh, SCADA control. This is working with the SCADA for contract number two. Um, contract number two is going to include uh, rehabilitation of our dewatering facilities, uh, sludge thickeners, uh, redoing our belt compressors, <coughs> installing, um, uh, installing other presses to, uh, to dewater. Uh, we're also going to be, um, with the incinerator being uh, demolished in contract one, will be uh, adding a new section to that building that will include uh, new, uh, new locker room facilities for staff. Uh, it'll include new, uh, new uh, laboratory and new collections offices. Uh, but the majority of the skater, skater related work is going to be with the dewatering. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot having to do with sludge thickening uh, and that. So, this is the developing uh, on contract to developing the plans in relation to SCADA. How, how far down the road do you anticipate this whole system integrating with the new equipment and the new processing that we're going to be doing? Um, are we looking at something over a period of five years? Or yeah, so it, it's... Two years it's tough because every time you bring on a new piece of equipment, you got to integrate that equipment, build the screens for that, build the uh, right. controls and the PLC. And that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, you know, that that's that's the tough thing that, that that you know the system right now and what we've done already. To, we've we've rebuilt the core system. So the core system, our computers, our servers, our, uh, our network, our communication. That's to a point where we're comfortable. Uh, all these is supporting new equipment and new processes that are coming online or being replaced. Okay. Unless anybody has any other comments or questions about this item, um, I'll move on to the next item, number eight. 
which is contract updates. Yes. <clears throat> um, we received, um, I received an email from the staff, I guess from Olga, um, I guess wanting to include a couple of the contract updates that are not in this, in this particular uh, package. Will you be discussing those? Yeah, so I do have them on the PowerPoint presentation as well. Okay, so, go ahead. Yeah, so if you want, we can start with those in the PowerPoint. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, contract one, uh, this is the update of the uh, project going on at the wastewater treatment facility. Um, so total contract price, uh, 18 million. Uh, there hasn't been any, any uh, change orders to date. There are PC, there are pending PCOs, which are out there. Uh, I'm aware of them. There, uh, there are a couple uh, that uh, that working with the uh, working with the contractor on uh, the engineer. Um, but uh, I expect at your next meeting, you probably will be seeing a uh, a change order uh, for contract one. Um, but, uh, the contract uh, has been moving along. They, uh, They've met all the, we had actually in that contract, we had midterm milestones um, that needed to be met, which included uh, placing our uh, uh, temporary control room and the, uh, the engineer's building. Those milestones have been met and they're online to meet uh, any other milestones. All right. Question? We, we don't have that sheet? No, it was emailed to the, it came in after the packet went out. I emailed it to oh. I've been looking for that. <laughs> I yeah. yeah, that's why I did add it. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to explain to uh, to you people when uh, when we started this item. Yeah. Uh, how's the, have they have they started the demolition on the um, on the incinerator? Uh, they haven't started any major demolition. They've started dismantling some of the uh, some of the components and stuff like that, but they. Uh, they haven't started any major demolition to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, so the transition, the transition to the site has been smooth. Yeah. No. Everything. Everything's been going good down there. Uh, within the next month, we'll probably be moving the control room to the uh, to the temporary to the control room trailer. Uh, that'll be the uh, operator's home for the next probably three to four years. Um, so uh, everything everything's been going good on site. Uh, a lot of disruption so far because they've been doing the underground uh, underground electrical duct banks, and there are some, some substantial duct banks. Up there. Uh, we have run into uh, one or two problems over at the PSA building, uh, where we had uh, where we had identified to run the uh, run the duct bank once we got into the ground. Uh, there was other unidentified utilities, and we weren't able to run it. Uh, so we've come up with the, an alternate plan. Uh, we've given it back to the contractor for pricing, but I'm I'm very comfortable with that plan. Um, I think it's actually a, a very good alternate to the original design. So, um, you know, but okay. that uh, they, they're moving along. Uh, every meeting, they haven't expressed any uh, any uh, Issues with uh, delivery times. They had some. They have some long lead items on there. A generator. They were talking when they ordered it. I think it was sixty or seventy weeks out. Um, and the uh, and the uh, some of the uh, ML the uh, load centers too. Those had long lead times. Uh, they've been in contact with those distributors. And due to the COVID nineteen, they haven't been made aware of any uh, issues with this. this Okay. All right. <coughs> These are just some of the current PCOs that are outstanding. So the next project, uh, again, it wasn't included in the packet. Um, we did receive an email, but uh, I do have, I'll put it up on the screen here. It's the middle street. Again, we went over this during the change order. 
uh, very close to closing out the project. Um, so uh, again, um, you know, approved change orders to date, 200,000 plus the 177 today. Uh, so the project is, uh, you know, is going to be under 10% uh, uh, over eight and a half percent or so over uh, on this project. Uh, just to remind the uh, remind this project was estimated by the engineer at seven point two million dollars, uh, and the uh, bid came in at five point three. The original bid, so the original bid was far under the estimate uh, or any of the other bidders. Uh, and uh, again, the kind of, you know to be less than eight percent, eight and a half percent over. Uh, is uh, is a very good uh, very good outcome I, I think uh, compared to the estimates on these projects. Paul, uh, if you had to put a handle on it, the extensions there was a 105 day extension on that project. Um, uh, you know, I'm pretty uh, myself. I think it was a great project. There was some issues and so forth. But what was the biggest contributing factor to the ex to that extension. So the time extension, um, so again, we had the FEMA MEMA grant. When we bid this project, uh, we knew it was there was gonna be a time issue. Um, we went out to bid, uh, so with the, with the FEMA grant, they have three years from when the grant is, uh, when they accept applications of the grant process, they have three years to complete the project on their guidebook. It took them almost two years to award the grant to us. Um, so, so we yeah, had that'll, that'll yeah, do it. we had we had okay. less than a year to construct this project. Um, we had discussions prior to bid with FEMA and MEMA, and they were they were assuring us that we would be able to get a time extension. Um, I didn't feel comfortable going out to bid though with their assurances that we were going to have a, have a time extension. So when we bid it, we put it on the contract of, that it needed to be done by this date. Um, once we got into the project and once I had a signed uh, change in scope from FEMA, uh, then I, we were able to issue a time extension so that the project could work out better. So, okay. And there was no cost associated to that time extension. All right, thanks. That straightens me up. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so the, else? the uh, other update you do have within your within your packet. Um, the first one, I believe, is uh, Chris Brook uh, from Wright Pierce. <laughs> right. Yeah. So again, on that project. Uh, you know, K.R. Resendi was the contractor. That project is very close to being complete. Minimal change orders so far. You had one change order in the packet. It was a zero balance. Uh, minimal change orders to date. And uh, the next change order that I expect to see would be a, a negative balance and change order. Um, so. Uh, Wait, uh, the screen you got up, the screen you got up right now, is that... Does that nope. reflect what? Nope. So this, go ahead, sir. It, it doesn't reflect the Crestbrook project. No. No. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is for, that's from, uh, so, yeah. Okay. Um, this one was in your packet. The uh, estimated for, on Crestbrook, uh, estimate a $600,000 negative, uh, negative change ought to come in. So that project will actually, to be under in the budget. Okay. Um, President Ave sewer pump station uh, is the next one within your packet. <coughs> that pump station, uh, a lot of the heavy underground work is complete. Um, the contractor has set the wet well, uh, set the valve vault, set the meter pit. Uh, they've done the excavation and installed the foundation for the generator building. They just poured the floor on Tuesday. Uh, all the pipe, all the uh, electrical underground piping is installed, as well as the water service. They're currently working on the force main that runs from the new pump station over to the force main and the roadway. 
Um, yeah, I saw that this morning. I was down there when uh, they were they were they had the excavators and everything else running the line going from the old to the new. Yeah, but so something that we're finding out on some of these projects uh, is that uh, reduced traffic has definitely been an advantage. Um, through the COVID nineteen, that's helped us out. You know, uh, traffic through that parking lot's reduced. Uh, where I'm involved with the uh, with the William S. Canning Boulevard project that's going on down there. So the, the reduced traffic has really uh, helped with the uh, with the working on these projects. So President Ab again is underway. Um, there is a couple of uh, outstanding potential change orders. Um, some of them uh, have been requested by us. Um, one of them was an overrun of uh, of a bid line item. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, again, there hasn't been anything proposed or requested by the contractor yet that, uh, that we feel that's out of line. So that contractor uh, is moving along and uh, continuing to work. So uh, they've, also con you know, they've also contacted their suppliers uh, to make sure that uh, they don't feel that there's going to be any impact on any supplies uh, due to the COVID-19 issue. It's nothing that they've been made aware of yet. Okay. So some of the some of these some change orders will be coming down the road to us at some point in time. Correct. Correct. All right. Um. All right. Anybody have any questions regarding that those subjects? If not, we'll move on to other business. Do you have a question? Is any? Paul. Go ahead. Yes. Um. On these pump stations, uh, they're going to be in, uh, have backup generators. Yeah, so both so both of these pump stations, South End and President Ave, who do have uh, backup gem generators that'll be installed in the generator building. Uh, they will also have the connections to uh, hook up the mobile generator that we're purchasing. Right, right, okay. Uh, on those generators, do you know the manufacturer's name that was uh, presented to us? Uh, Cummings. Oh, Cummins? Okay. Could I have a copy of the specs so I can see uh, if they need a catalog of converter or not, like, so that we don't have like we had the last time? Yep. Well, definitely. I know we did have that, that uh, Island Woods and the uh, developer did take care of that for us. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure I get you the specifications on these. I believe these were all tier four engines. Um, the what? I believe they're all tier four. Oh, um, yeah. Which which meets the current requirement that put in the specs, but I'll make sure I get them to. I'll make sure I get the specs to you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody has any other comments? Not all. Go on to item number nine. Other business. Does anybody have any other business? Nope. No. All right. The only other business I have is uh, basically. We're in a tough environment right now. It just asks all of us to be as safe and well as possible and uh, take care of yourselves. That's all I got to say. All right, yeah, uh, just just a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, it, you know, there's, there's a lot out there going on with COVID-19. I'd like to thank uh, the commissioners for being able to uh, to have the meeting uh, through this video conference. This was some uh, business that uh, I felt we needed to get done. Uh, the budget and the award of uh, the South End Pump Station. So I would like to say a thank you to our staff that's out there, the sewer, sewer department staff that's out there, um, both at our water plant and our wastewater plant. It's not something where we can uh, turn the switch off and walk away. Uh, mm -hmm. We are essential personnel. Uh, all of our staff are required to be in uh, at all times of the day and night. Uh, everything from our operators are full, uh, coming in down at the wastewater plant to our collection staff, to our maintenance staff. Um, they're all needed. Uh, you know, this is a very trying time. Uh, they do have to leave their families when uh, other people are in stay home or other people are told to stay home. Um, so I'd just like to thank all of our staff for, uh, for hanging in there and supporting us through this time. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of information that goes goes on. Uh, I've been on multiple calls with DEP and EPA uh, regarding uh, both the water system and the wastewater system. Um, 
through everything that's been uh, that's been distributed and all everything that's been studied about the COVID nineteen, um, the drinking water is not affected by COVID nineteen. Uh, we do use chlorine for disinfection within the drinking water, so the drinking water that comes out of the tap uh, is safe to drink. And this is based on the information that I uh, that I've uh, gotten from the CDC. Um, so I just want to put it out there that our drinking water is safe, and there is no hazard or no spread um, that has to come through a drinking water system. Uh, through a wastewater system, uh, there is uh, some question on. <laughs> whether wastewater does carry it, um, and it may carry it through our system, uh, our underground system that isn't uh, that doesn't come in contact with the public. Um, down at our plant, it is treated, uh, so the uh, wastewater goes through the plant, and it is disinfected with uh, sodium hypochlorite, strong bleach, which at that point would kill it prior to going out into our receiving body, which is the Mont Hope Bay. Uh, so. Uh, again, I don't think, you know, there's nothing that uh, would, uh, would add to the spread of this through the water system or through the water system. So that's something that I just want to get out there because, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, uh, a lot of unanswered questions that people may have about this. And uh, um, I just wanted to put that out there that that's the information that I've received, uh, that this is safe uh, and able to go through it. Uh, just to thank the uh, our employees and the families of our employees. Mm -hmm. Points well taken. Yep. And, I have uh, a question. Yes. Paul, on that uh, on that the chemical that you put in at the plant, would it be advantageous to uh, to spot put it in different locations in the city, so that when it gets to the plant, that's less they have to uh, pump into it to be sure that it's already pre-treated. Is that a, a means of uh, an avenue that we could look at or is it not? No, that's not something that we would really want to do. So through the wastewater process, the bacteria um, that we kill before it goes out to the bay really helps with the, with the breakdown and building of the, uh, of the different microorganisms that we need to operate the plant. Okay. So if we were to put uh, chlorine in different spots, plus then also it would become tough to uh, you know isolate a spot and then add it inject it in uh, we would need EPA approval to do that um, so I think okay. it's, at this point oh, it's just, just yeah an idea yeah it was something that was brought up in one of the one of the meetings and conversations with the EP that, uh, that you know that uh, always what have been added right. and, uh, you know we don't feel that there's any type of uh, that there's any type of hazard that that would benefit from. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? No. If not, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. Stay well. Thank you very much. Everybody stay Take healthy. Care. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys.